wanted to answer the question of why an individual work of art matters. You know, why someone who isn't a specialist in the discipline ought to find something engaging. How does it relate to uh, its moment? How does it speak to the career output of the artist in question, distinct from, again, it simply being an object in a vacuum? I think one of the real challenges in contending with art from the past, especially from cultures that seem quite remote from our own, is the challenge of bringing the, the original work of art back to life. Uh, and instead of simply talking or telling people verbally about the extent to which European artists uh, re-engaged with the ancient world to consider how to represent the human form, we're actually showing it. So we're juxtaposing a great anonymous painting of St. Sebastian with a second century Roman torso to make very direct uh, that sense of causality, of, that there was indeed a formal relationship between these objects. Not only is there intellectual value in doing this, but we can do it because of the sheer breadth and depth of the collections. So that right now you will find, for instance, our great Vincent van Gogh uh, painting of the Tarascon Diligence hung uh, with two Japanese prints and his companions to say something about how van Gogh was drawing visual inspiration. Last year when we rehung these galleries, we decided to uh, do them in a way that we'd never done before. We wanted to integrate with the paintings and sculptures um, works on paper and works of decorative art. The 19th century painters like Monet, like Van Gogh, were fascinated by Japanese prints. These began to enter the Paris uh, market in the mid 19th century when Japan opened up to trade with the West and both uh, Monet uh, and Van Gogh collected Japanese prints as well as many other artists of the time. In the Van Gogh you can see the influence of Japanese prints in several ways. In Japanese prints of the sort they were collecting you often find interesting viewpoints onto a scene. So here you kind of have a bird's eye view down into the space and then it pushes up and telescopes away from you. James's approach is, is one which is going to make the museum not just kind of more accessible, more marketable, but will um, we'll do what museums across the country, across the world are being forced to do now, which is make art relevant to the present day in a way that's more than kind of superficial. Um, that's always been a, something we try to talk to the students about, but James has also been crucial in opening the museum to more than just the university community. Um, these kind of comparisons he's drawn are, are, are just one way to do that. We have certainly been opening ourselves out much more substantially, I think, in the last couple of years. We began our first ever evening hours. We now keep the galleries open every Thursday evening until 10 o'clock. Uh, those evenings are often heavily programmed. Uh, uh, with things that are again intended to create entry points into thinking about the visual arts. That might be film screenings, it might be concerts, it might be gallery talks. Uh, but again, something that opens out the world of art to someone who doesn't self-define as an expert. My view is that every art museum is by definition, or should be, a teaching museum. Through looking at a broad array of, let's call them cultural artifacts, we can get a better understanding about uh, the impulses of a culture at any given point in the past. Uh, and we're encouraging students and other visitors to make these direct connections, to see linkages and to reawaken a sense of how would this have been viewed in the time that it was created and what were the factors in society that gave rise? Why do paintings or any other works of art look the way they look? This is a portrait of uh, Jean Cocteau uh, by Modigliani and it shows the translation into his painting of the aesthetics of African sculpture. We have these um, heddle pulleys. These are actually instruments used in weaving in association with the Modigliani because this is exactly the sort of African art that um, he was looking at and was interested in. And when you look at the treatment of the face, the way that the uh, eyebrow is related to the nose, the elongation of the face and the chin, and the uh, somewhat diamond-shaped mouth. All of those stylizations of the features really resonate with the African objects that he was interested in. All work was at some point contemporary. We forget this in a certain way. And I think this period I approach to creating a, a deeper sense of both historical and visual context is a way of trying to get at that. Uh, and all of this combines, we hope, to create a more accessible approach to very rich content 
no matter what one's background is, whether it's a Princeton student who has come here to study in a field that has absolutely nothing to do with the history of art, or indeed a member of the community for whom museum going may not be something they've traditionally experienced.